Hello everybody, uh, welcome to another video. My name is Dan Bigman from LearnGPR.com, your GPR professor. And today we're going to answer a question I've gotten um, quite a few times recently from some students in our GPR Basics course. GPR Basics, uh, you can go to LearnGPR.com and sign up for that. Um, and so the students there, mostly, you know, who are asking this question are in utility locating. And they were wondering if GPR can be used to identify a leak in a pipe and specifically where that leak is. And the answer is resounding, yes, absolutely, it can be used to identify a leak in a pipe. So today, the topic we're going to be dealing with is leak detection. <clears throat> and so we're going to draw our ground surface. So here's the ground, all right? little thicker. Here's your ground surface. Here is your pipe. And excuse my, uh, my, my artistry. But let's say in this pipe you have a leak. And so here's the water coming out of the leak. All right. And then finally, like here's the next geological layer below the pipe. So we're going to look at this in two different ways. And the first way we're going to look at it is in two-dimensional profile view. Can you see where the pipe is leaking? And second, can you look at it in 3D and see where the pipe is leaking? Right? So first, to start with, um, the, way, the easiest way to view a leak in a pipe in two dimensions, which is looking you know, down into the surface as a profile, is by running your GPR on top of your pipe. Okay? So here's your pipe. Your GPR is placed right on top of it. This assumes that you know where the pipe is. And you run, right? so here's your GPR. You run your GPR along your pipe, right? right along your pipe, parallel to your pipe, right just above your pipe. So you're basically mapping the top of your pipe. And what you're going to see then in a profile view, right? So this is depth, right? And then this is length. The first thing you're going to see, right, is you have like um, you know, zero nanoseconds, 10 nanoseconds, 20, or you can even say centimeters, 20, uh, 30 centimeters, 40 centimeters, etc. First thing you're going to see is you're going to see a high reflection off of your ground surface, right? That's your first reflection, okay? So you're going to see that first. Right, so this is your ground. The second thing you're going to see, so let's say this distance is, uh, let's say this is 20 centimeters. Then at 20 centimeters, you're going to see another reflection. Okay, so pipe. And this is not to scale. This is not to scale, by the way. Okay, so the next is you're going to see your pipe. And then finally, right, let's say that your uh, geological layer is, um, you know, is 40 centimeters below surface, you'll see your geological layer. Okay. So, geological layer. And this is what you should see then. You should see a high res amplitude response off of the ground surface, a high amplitude response off of your pipe, and then potentially a high amplitude response off of the next geological layer. That's without a leak. But with a leak, something happens. With a leak, you get a distortion in the pipe's reflection. You get a, a distortion in the pipe's reflection right where the leak is. Okay? And so instead, you'll see somewhat of a, of a distorted amplitude reflection here um, you know, that's going to look kind of awkward. All right? It's going to look awkward. It could be circular. It could be no reflection. Um, it, or, but what you're going to get is a distortion of the pipe right above it. That's why it's critical to go directly over your pipe. And the next thing that happens is as the water flows through the soil and it flows through this bottom geological layer, you begin to get distortion of the geological layer. It's generally wider because the water is spreading, right? Okay, from the point of leak down into the geological layer and it's deforming it. So as saturation occurs, you're going to get a 
distortion of the geological layer below it. So this, for example, is what gonna, you're going to see in profile view. Distortion of the pipe right where the leak is and the distortion of the geological layer. Now here's the critical thing. When you have water flowing through the pipe, you want to turn the water on and let it flow for a while. If you turn it on and it just starts leaking, right? so let's say the pipe is turned off because it has a leak, you need to turn it back on in order to identify this. When you turn it back on, you're going to want to let it flow because you may not begin to see distortion for 10 or 15 minutes of having that water flow through. And it's not going to be until maybe 30 or 45 or 60 minutes of having that water flow through that you begin to see real distortion, not just in the pipe, but also in the uh, soil and the uh, geological layers that are below your pipe. So it takes some time. Okay, so at first, you're going to see a high amplitude reflection here. That's, you know, T equals zero. Okay? As T equals 10, you may start to get a little bit of a distortion. As T equals 20, you're going to get more of a distortion. As T equals, right, 30 plus, you're going to begin to get even more uh, of a distortion. The water, uh, the, the soil becomes more saturated, um, the, the, the geological layer below becomes more saturated, and then there's less of a contrast between the soil and the geological layer because those pores are all filled with water, creating a low amplitude reflection um, when you hit that geological layer. So that's one. That's how you see it in profile view. So the second part of this is looking at it in 3D. Right? Three dimensions. So can you see a leak in three dimensions? Yes. Okay, you, 